but you have you have or should have copies of the April 12th and the April 17th uh, bite. These two bites occurred, both, both of them. This has been a difficult case for me, and I apologize for not coming forward with more definitive recommendations. I've been waiting for um, town council and other area professionals' opinions on it before I uh, came up with my recommendations. It's been difficult because on one hand, you have um, a family and a, a tenure employees who've been negatively and largely impacted and, and frightened um, by the situation. On the other hand, the bite occurred in the home and I haven't had in the past any um, leash law violations or reports of the dog being aggressive or loose or you know, a problem in the neighborhood. But at any rate, um, we do have evidence of clearly one bite um, that was significant in nature, the, the second one on April 17th. The first one I spoke with the mother of the two-year-old child, there was some confusion in gray area as to whether it was a bite or a scratch. Um, the doctor wasn't sure, and the mother of this uh, young man didn't, ha didn't have a problem with the dog at that time. Um, I do have some recommendations. I, I do think the dog should be declared potentially dangerous, and I have some conditions of keeping, but before I get into that, I think you should probably hear from Julie Garrison, so that you have a little better understanding of what happened. Um, my son was bitten over at his friend's house, and um, bitten twice. And um, he had previously bitten a child five days earlier. And if the officer had reported, excuse me, his, if the family had reported that incident, the dog would have been under quarantine. And my son would not have been bitten twice. I think me and Deborah talked about some um, restrictions for the dog and some aware of dog sign on the house. Yes, and we I'm, do have Deb's, a copy of Deb's recommendations. Um, I spoke to her and um, I could be happy with that. Only the Board of Selectmen can make an order with regard to the keeping or restraint of the dog, and that would be up to your review if another incident were to happen. Did, did you say this dog still isn't neutered? Because you, hadn't you already recommended that once to them? I had recommended that. I had discussed that. And both Joanna and I were present when we released the dog from quarantine. Um, the dog owner, Laura Lambert at the time, told me she had an appointment um, they were just waiting for the quarantine to be lifted, the dog was going to be neutered. When I checked with the animal hospital, that she had told me where it was going to be done. I checked uh, a couple of days ago, and as of a few days ago, the dog had not been neutered. Uh, um, the dog owner had also told me at the time, but I, have, I don't have any evidence to say that, it, that that happened either, that she was going to seek professional advice. She'd already been in contact with the animal hospital for you know, I recommended that she see a trainer or a behaviorist. That's a good thing, um, but I don't know. And I, the only issue that I have with that sometimes is that trainers tend to always say they can fix the dog, but it's a step in the right direction. I'm not comfortable with this dog being in the town of Kingston or really any place else. Um, they had to know that this hearing was going to happen, you would think. They told the dog uh, officer that it would be neutered. It wasn't neutered. You had a two-year-old that got scratched. You had a nine-year-old that almost lost his eye. I personally don't have, I have no patience with this because I've seen what has happened before with, uh, with dogs. And this, Sandy, you brought some information forward. This is an aggressive dog. It's, you know, an oriental species, and they call him a grizzly bear. And, I just don't have a place for him in Kingston. I don't have a place for him in my heart. And I, I don't, you know, I apologize to the family, but I'd rather see this dog just go away. 
Well, to, to add a little bit to that, um, we did go on to a, a website called the Akita Rescue Society, and the dog that we're talking about, the public, is an Akita. It's a large, um, husky-like dog, and what I've heard from people who own them, it's like a husky on steroids. <laughs> um, but this, this report that we do have says that the, the dog is very protective of the children that are not in its own home, whether they're in the home or not. And it is, by nature, an aggressive dog. It needs specific training. Um, and I'm not sure that uh, you know, we can condition that they get professional help with this dog. Um, but I'm not sure that uh, Mark's not right. My recommendations were based on my conversations with the dog owners as well. And I expected them to be here and to respond to all your uh, I think Mark's on the uh, right track. I'm not quite ready to get all the way there, but the dog, to no fault of its own, is dangerous. As it, uh, I would hate to say dangerous always, but in effect, that's what it is. You're not being responsible for your pet. Uh, to have a, an animal that has a demonstrated behavior problem and not taking uh, remedies, uh, steps to remedy those uh, problems and to protect people and still have them exposed, children exposed to that animal, knowing its history, that board is only irresponsible. Uh, I was only going to speak to Mark's recommendation that the dog be removed. That um, I don't, I don't know if we'd have to have another hearing. What I'd like to say is that if any of the restrictions or recommendations that the dog officer have made um, or that we put on this animal aren't met, that within 30 days the dog be removed from Kingston. There's a liability involved here too. If we don't take the right steps, this could come back to really be a problem. Well, along with what Mark's saying, but to say that if any of the recommendations aren't followed, it would not be destroyed within 30 days. What I was thinking about, and I'll see if I can get a second, is I'd like to make a recommendation that we uh, we we follow the recommendations of, uh, of the animal you know, control officer and uh, and and make a few adjustments to it. And one of them being the dog. She's allowing 60 days for the dog to be new. I'd like to allow 30 days for the dog to be neutered. I'd like the clear posting of signs. I would like a requirement for a leash, um, non-retractable at six feet that, that she recommended, recommended. And any time the dog is outside the home, that it needs to be muzzled. If any of these conditions are not met within the next 30 days, the dog will be ordered to be put down. And if they uh, remove the dog from the premises or sell it, Yes, yeah, absolutely, sure. absolutely. I think that's a lot of state water, isn't it? Provide us no. with information. But yes, the dog cannot be removed from the property without our notification. That shows that we have done everything we possibly can before we ordered the destruction of the dog, so that if there is an appeal, that will be there. The failure of them to appear today is probably more than likely a, you know, an indication of what we're going to see from the owners. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 